Hi students, today we start lecture 26 in our course and today I'm going to discuss critical Mach number and critical pressure. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, what happens is that if you place an airfoil in a flow and let's say the free stream Mach number is something like 0.3, there is going to be a certain point in the flow, typically on the upper surface, where the Mach number is going to be higher than the free stream value. And this happens because the air speeds up on the top surface of the airfoil. And so the peak velocity or the peak Mach number is going to occur on the top surface somewhere near the leading edge. Now let's presume a situation where we increase the free stream Mach number say to 0.5. So what would happen is that the Mach number at this point where the Mach number is maximum on the airfoil may become something like 0.7. Now, if you continue to do this experiment, what will happen is that you will reach a certain free stream Mach number, let's say it is 0.61, where the Mach number on the surface is going to become one. So you are essentially going to get sonic flow on the airfoil surface. And this Mach number at which you get this sonic flow point is known as the critical Mach number. So in this case, M critical would be 0.61. So essentially M critical is the free stream Mach number at which sonic flow is first encountered on the airfoil. Now, there's an interesting fact which also takes place and that is that the maximum Mach number point which is there on the airfoil is also the point of the minimum surface pressure. So this is where the pressure is most negative. So we can say that at this particular point, CP min would take place. This of course also corresponds to the point of maximum velocity here. And therefore we can say that CP is minimum at the point of maximum Mach number because remember CP is directly proportional to P. It's simply a non-dimensional way of measuring the pressure at this given point. So if the pressure at the given point is P, then I can easily calculate CP and all I'm doing is non-dimensionalizing and normalizing with the values for the free stream which are given by the subscript infinity. So of course, just to recapitulate, P is the pressure, rho is the density, V is the velocity, M is the Mach number. That's the nomenclature we are using. Now, the critical pressure coefficient is going to take place because the lowest pressure coefficient you are going to get on the airfoil section is going to occur at the critical Mach number. So at the critical Mach number, the pressure which is going to be present at the point of sonic flow, that is the critical pressure. We use the notation CP subscript CR here to denote that this is the lowest pressure you are going to get on the airfoil cross section. And again, remember that CP is a non-dimensional measure of pressure. Now, what happens is that this CP minimum value, which is of course minimum in all cases, depending on the maximum velocity taking place some point here. So this value is going to go in this manner. And as the Mach number increases at a certain value, which is the critical Mach number, this is going to become CP critical. So that's essentially the critical pressure coefficient. And this, of course, takes place at the point of maximum velocity. Now we are going to define a relationship for critical pressure. So to do that, we are going to look at different definitions and also we are going to look at isentropic flow equations. So let's start with the definition of CP itself, which is P minus P infinity by Q infinity, Q being the dynamic pressure. And we simply rewrite it in this form. So all I have done is put it in this algebraic form here. And if you expand this out, you will clearly see this is nothing but P by Q infinity, the first term. And the second term is P infinity by Q infinity. So we have simply rewritten CP in this form and we are going to use it later. Now, if you look at Q infinity, we can write it as half rho V square, and then we can divide both the upper and lower sides by gamma P infinity. So this is nothing but rho V square written in this form. 
So here what happens is that we get the formulation in terms of speed of sound. So do recall that gamma p infinity is going to be a infinity square. So this is going to lead us to a infinity square. So gamma p infinity by rho infinity, that's a infinity square. The v infinity square comes here. The gamma p infinity is here. And then we get this expression here, which is gamma by 2 m infinity square p infinity. So essentially what we have done is we have written the dynamic pressure in terms of the Mach number by using the fact that the speed of sound square equals gamma p infinity by rho infinity from the definition of the speed of sound. If you are unfamiliar with this, you can go and look at some of the previous lectures where we introduced the Mach number itself and the speed of sound. So let's now recapitulate the nomenclature. We have this airfoil cross section. There's a certain point here. This can be a general point, and at this point, pressure is P. And then in the free stream, we give the pressure as P infinity, the density as rho infinity, the Mach number as M infinity, and the velocity as V infinity. So now let us turn to the isentropic flow relations. And what we are going to do is we are going to again consider the airfoil section and take a point on the top surface. And at this point, we are going to have Mach number M, pressure P, and total pressure P0. So essentially for this particular point, I can write the isentropic flow relation like this. That is P0 by P is this value, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 M squared to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. And similarly, if I were to look at what is going on in the free stream, there is going to be a P infinity pressure in the free stream and there is also going to be a total pressure P0 in the free stream. And so I can write P0 by P infinity is a similar relation except M is now replaced by M infinity. Now, one of the important things to consider is that in isentropic flow, the total pressure remains constant throughout. And that's a factor which we are going to use next. We are going to equate the two P0s in these two equations. So we are going to equate the two total pressures in these two equations, which means I can say P0 is P into this expression here. I can write that down here. This P0 is P infinity into this expression here. And so I write this down here. Now, I can very quickly get P by P infinity as this form here, and then further as this form here, where I have simply consolidated the gamma by gamma minus one term into one bracket here. So again, this is all very simple, very symmetrical and so on. You can clearly see on this side, the P and M were there, this side P infinity, M infinity was there. And now it has become like this after the fact that P zero has been removed from this system because we have considered the fact that P0 is going to be the same throughout the flow for isentropic flow. So this is a particular physical feature of isentropic flow, which we are using here. So this is our good looking equation now. And just to recapitulate what this is telling you, this is telling you the relationship between M and P at a given point on the airfoil here and M infinity and P infinity in the free stream. So these are essentially the four relations we are getting between the pressures and the Mach number. Gamma, of course, you remember, is the ratio of specific heats. That's 1.4 for air. So now we are going to use all the equations we have derived till now. This was the one we got in our previous slide. And in the slides before, we got Q infinity in terms of Mach number. That was gamma by 2, M infinity square P infinity. And then we also got the expression for CP. So now we are going to take the expression for CP and I'm going to take P infinity by Q infinity from this equation here. So you can clearly see that that's going to become 2 by gamma M in infinity square. And then I substitute P by P infinity from the formula I derived in the previous slide. So I put that here and so I get this nice equation out here. Now this equation is pretty good. It relates the CP value 
to the free stream mark number and the mark number at that given point we were dealing with so essentially it's the pressure coefficient at that particular point we were considering on the top surface of the airfoil so now recall the decision or the definition of critical pressure the critical pressure corresponds to m equals 1 so now I put m equal to 1 in this formula and so I get this equation here and this becomes CPCR so very quickly from this general formula for CP I can get the specific formula for the critical pressure by simply pu putting Mach number equal to 1 so the free stream Mach number of course remain at infinity but this M corresponds to the Mach number on the top surface of the airfoil. If you are getting confused, go and look at the previous slide where I have made that picture. So essentially, if I simplify that CPCR further, I get this equation and I can plot this equation. I will get a graph something like this. If you take a good look at this equation, you will see this is purely a function of M infinity or the free stream Mach number and the value gamma which is a property of air so if you have these two properties you can very quickly calculate the critical pressure so now let's turn to some more aspects about airfoil design which we can get out of this study so we have seen that the critical Mach number is going to play an important role because the critical Mach number is less than one sometime considerably less than one but the airfoil has already encountered sonic flow so the flow around the airfoil section has become quite problematic and it's a source of various compressible phenomena so what happens is that we would essentially prefer airfoils where the critical Mach number is high especially if you are using these airfoils in high Mach number regions or in transonic flow regions. so it's been found that thin airfoils have higher critical Mach number which I've shown here for example in this airfoil M reaches 1 at a critical Mach number of 0.7 but if I have a thick airfoil like this M reaches 1 at a critical Mach number of 0.6 so these are just illustrative numbers to show you this fact qualitatively now why this happens is because there is much more flow expansion in thick airfoils because of the large camber and the thickness involved here and therefore there is going to be a higher velocity on the top surface and thin airfoils are of course relatively thin so it's much more likely that the flow expansion is going to be less and so you're going to get higher critical Mach number values now there's one more way to actually delay the onset of various compressible phenomena and that is to sweep the blade so to illustrate that let's first start with a straight wing so this is a straight wing i have an airfoil section in flow and so the airfoil is going to see v infinity as the incoming velocity and there is of course going to be a critical mach number associated with this particular flow and this airfoil and so that is let's say mcr now what if we were to sweep the blade so you will see many blades have a swept swept design like this so let's say we have swept it by some angle theta then what happens is that the airfoil actually sees a velocity given by v effective and that is v infinity cos theta so from front the velocity is coming as v infinity but there is a component here v infinity cos theta which we get from trigonometry and the airfoil actually sees this diminished velocity so this is certainly advantageous to the airfoil cross section because the flow field may be at a higher velocity but the airfoil is seeing a lower velocity so in this case i have taken three angles for example 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree and correspondingly i have obtained the velocities v infinity cos theta so you can see these velocities here and you can see that as i sweep back more and more the velocity component which the airfoil sees is going to be lesser and lesser so this is a huge advantage in terms of the high speed flight now we can therefore say that the effective critical Mach number is going to change so for example for this kind of a swept situation the effective Mach number is going to become m critical by cos theta where m critical is the Mach number corresponding to just the airfoil section if it was a straight wing 
So for example, if M critical is 0.7 for the at fault section for a straight wing, the effective critical Mach number becomes 0.7 by cos 30 if I have 30 degree sweep. That is 0 0.808 for the swept wing. So essentially it has become much more. So now I can fly at a much higher speed and still not have compressibility effects happening on the wing actually there. So that's something which is very advantageous. So today we discussed some important concepts. Let's try to summarize these things. The first important fact, of course, is the critical Mach number is the free stream Mach number at which sonic flow first takes place at one point on the airfoil surface. So this Mach number does represent the capacity of the airfoil section to handle high speed flow. Now this point of sonic Mach number also has the minimum pressure value and this pressure value is known as the critical pressure and we derived the expression for critical pressure by using isentropic flow relations and also by considering that Mach number is equal to 1 and also the fact that the total pressure remains constant across isentropic flow. So those were some equations which were interesting and that's actually a good application of the isentropic flow equations in some realistic problems. Now we saw that critical Mach number can be increased and this is possible if we take thin airfoil sections these will naturally have a higher critical Mach number and also if we sweep the wing we further increase the critical Mach number or I should say the effective critical Mach number. So if you were to combine these two facts, that is you use thin airfoil sections specially designed for example for high speed flow such as supercritical airfoils or things like that, then you are going to increase your critical Mach number and also if you were to sweep your wings then you can fly at faster speeds without encountering the deleterious effects of compressibility. So both these facts are actually used in aircraft and you will see that any aircraft such as the Boeing 777 or you take the Airbus A350, all these aircraft typically have highly swept wings or pretty large sweep and therefore what that does is that it's going to help the aircraft in terms of delaying the critical Mach number which is of course going to delay the onset of the sonic flow on the aircraft. So all efforts to increase critical Mach number is beneficial for transonic flow conditions at which many airplanes actually fly because you want to get from point A to B as fast as possible. So I'll end this video here. I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.